Hi everyone, um, my name is Giulio Verdini and I'm a reader in urban planning at the University of Westminster in, uh, in London, in the UK. And I would like to, to thanks for uh, Professor Paolo Ceccarelli and Eloud for inviting me to, to give my contribution to this, uh, uh, through this interview uh, to the topic of how we, uh, we somehow need to, to, to rethink and reconsider cities and regions in light of the current uh, coronavirus situation and uh, the pandemic which is affecting our uh, daily life uh, today. So what that will imply for future cities. And uh, given my, my background, uh, I'm an architect, planner and, and also background in regional economic uh, development and with, with working experience and research experience, particularly in the context of rural China, uh, I would like to respond to that by um, uh, looking at a few issues under discussion today regarding cities and the countryside, and so the relationship between urban and rural areas in general terms, and what uh, we have seen and possibly we can learn instead from the Chinese experience of uh, rural areas. Uh, whether there is some uh, uh, some learning that could inform our policies, practice planning in the in cities everywhere, not just of course uh, in China. Now, I would like to start by saying that uh, what I've seen so far is that most of the discussion happening and taking place regarding the spreading of coronavirus and uh, and the impact on on uh, particularly Europe when when that rich Europe and then uh, United States is about uh, the fact that this is, 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 has been considered really an urban problem due to the fact that, of course, living the proximity of people living together, the fact of using mass transport system and, uh, and uh, sharing public spaces and, and other, uh, of course, activities has actually had a strong impact in the fast spreading of the virus. So the response to that has been always a sort of natural response to that. The problem is the fact that we are increasingly living in uh, agglomerations. And also it has been uh, said that uh, the density of our cities might also be part of the problem which is actually uh, goes against what has been said in last decades about the fact that instead the density would allow to live in a more sort of compact way, more sustainable way, reducing our commuting and so on. But this is actually in, now in, in conflict with, with uh, public health issues, apparently. Uh, now, let's start from this point, because I think this is crucial. And, uh, uh, and I, also, I also think that it is not entirely true that the problem is, is density, but the problem has been instead uh, of a different kind, uh, more related to, to overcrowding, for instance, in some global cities, such as, uh, I mean, for instance, London, or New York. And here the problem of overcrowding is not really related to how cities have been designed and, and whether they are compact and, where, and, and what is the form of the city in which we live, but more on issue of, for instance, housing affordability, the fact that we are increasingly uh, observing, uh, let's say, uh, sharing of uh, accommodation, houses which are, 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 are um, overcrowded, uh, no matter if you are coming from a disadvantaged background or, or, or a low-income group living in suburban areas, but also in inner city areas with, with professionals, with, the, with young professionals, but also mature professionals, is something that goes across both the middle class and the most disadvantaged. Uh, groups. Um, so it, the, the problem therefore is not only about uh, cities but it's also about uh, economies of cities and uh, labor issues and how people, uh, how to say, are residing, living and working in cities. Uh, a quick response to that, uh, particularly from certain, uh, I mean, some from newspapers or some from journalists, but also from some architects, for instance, which has been quite vocal on this, is that, uh, okay, this, if this is the problem, then the solution is uh, going back to living less dense areas. 
and for, and so the, therefore the countryside could be a suitable alternative and we could even imagine a wave back, a uh, sort of counter-urbanism and uh, to, to, of, of people going back to live in uh, less dense areas, villages and towns, surrounding cities and so on. As I said, if the problem is, is, is really not uh, density per se and the form of cities, but is more uh, the economic model in which we live, probably the, 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 it cannot be uh, the countryside an easy response just in terms of, 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 of the fact that they, they are less dense by nature, but it should be linked to, the, to what kind of, of, of job opportunities they can offer, how they are related to the economy of uh, cities and regions in which we live. And, this, and here comes the problem of considering rural areas as a sort of easy, easy answer to the problem of overcrowding or density or, 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 or agglomeration, which is uh, somehow can better convey uh, viruses and health problems even in the future if we want to somehow uh, move towards a more safer uh, urban environment. Uh, this environment must be safer for, for sure and we must adopt all the measures but, most, but also must be sustainable from, from an economic and social point of view and should somehow address needs at various levels. And here it comes my my probably my experience in, in working in rural areas, I would say not just in China, but I started probably more systematically there. And I, uh, we have done, we have done with Ilao some workshops in the context of China, in, 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 the, in, in cities like uh, uh, Suzhou, in the countryside around the, the, between Shanghai and Suzhou, but we have equally worked in Europe. Uh, we have done workshops in, in Calabria, in the south of Italy. No matter where we were, either Europe or China, we were always facing the problem of uh, uh, where to start and what can be, how we can reimagine the future of the countryside and uh, from, from various uh, point of view, not just from the point of view of uh, sort of beautification and making that more uh, livable, but for women and, 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 and how you can make this, this is the question. But instead to look at what might be um, really suitable alternative economic models for the countryside. Now, we have been through, particularly in, 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 in the West, in Europe, through decades of these investments in, the, in, in uh, rural areas. Uh, we, have, uh, we had a set of policies somehow uh, narrowly focused on certain specific... Um, um, to, to direct the economic model towards certain specific outcomes. Um, more recently tending towards the idea that basically rural areas can be can offer suitable uh, opportunities just somehow for um, pretty much one of functional economic modeling to tourism and in all our workshop that we did uh, the idea was how we can dismantle this idea how we can instead try to uh, to re-understand and reconsidering some like, like local resources into new development processes, linking those opportunities to, for instance, demands coming from cities, but also trying to, to sort of envision more um, sustainable pattern of development uh, from, from uh, below, um, uh, working through participatory processes in villages and so on. Uh, the problem was... Uh, let's say, was really uh, trying to get you new know, insights into how we can diver 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 uh, diversify in local economy. And I think this is key and this is crucial for the current period in which we live, because tourism is actually one of the problems of, uh, of uh, coronavirus. While in cities overcrowding has to do, as I said before, with um, let's say this, uh, the, the, the particular uh, condition of living and working and housing affordability and so on, overcrowding instead in rural areas is due to the fact that, that the main driver of, of, of wealth in the rural areas, like tourism, has uh, uh, characteristics, specific characteristics. It's concentrated in certain periods, has peaks in the, in the season, in the summer, for instance, and if there are some tourist spot uh, or, or famous one, they are largely overwhelmed with tourists in certain periods and so on and so forth. This model might not be uh, sustainable anymore, for sure not now, not in the next months and possibly not even in the next years if we want to 
somehow respond properly to the current challenges of, of the pandemic. And here comes into, into play the, uh, the experience and I want to bring uh, some sort of insight into, into the experience of rural China, as it could offer uh, an angle by which we could, uh, we could somehow reconsider the countryside and cities together in a future scenarios of, of somehow sustainability. Um, I have done this uh, by working with, with UNESCO, by, by, by collecting information and data in cases uh, presented last year in, in a conference in, in, in Sichuan uh, called the Culture 2030, uh, Urban Rural Development to the, the, the Experience of China, and particularly looking at the experience of a city like Meishan in, in, in Sichuan, very interesting from various, from various points of view. And I think the main message of the report and also the discussion happening during the conference was about the fact that uh, there is today uh, the need, in that case particularly for a middle-income country like China, where still a large amount of population lives in rural area, to really largely invest in, uh, in the countryside. And that was possible due to the fact that the government was had just launched uh, a large scheme for uh, supporting the economic development and sustainable economic development, uh, locally based economic development in in the countryside. Uh, of course, it means also <coughs> to invest in uh, in tourism. I mean, this is something that is uh, taking place in China at a very fast pace, of course. But on the other hand, within that large public investment from the central government, there's also lots of funding available for supporting local production for innovation, for creativity, for upgrading of a, of a set of existing activities through by, by, by setting up training for uh, local entrepreneurs and so on and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> very uh, successful has been the whole uh, quick, fast shift towards the so-called digital countryside. Uh, and the fact that local production has been uh, deeply sustained by possibility of uh, online purchasing um, and using very very sophisticated platforms uh, um, develop, which are very very common in, in an Asian context much more than than for instance in the West and in Europe and in the during, by the way, during the period of the lockdown, which was very severe in, the, in, uh, in China, much more than here in Europe and in general in the West, uh, the possibility of having such a well-distributed system of, uh, of um, online selling uh, and, uh, and also both from the, from, from the countryside to cities and, and of course within cities, with a very effective, efficient distribution system, has allowed people to properly stay in at home, uh, to do a real hard lockdown, if I may say that, and, and solving the problems even quicker than we are doing it now, where instead we were very reluctant actually to, <clears throat> to quick uh, self-isolate and to accept that as, uh, as the, the, the norm. Now that shows in a way that uh, what has been done and so the investment in the, in, the, in the digital countryside in China has been really useful for sustaining uh, the economy in such a critical uh, phase, such a critical fa economic and social phase for the country. So uh, what is here the learning, uh, of course? Uh, the learning is that probably we should again look uh, at uh, uh, the countryside as part of, uh, of uh, the functioning of uh, wider city regions, that's for sure, I wouldn't deny that without advocating simply for uh, an easy uh, movement, moving back to something, uh, to, 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 to villages and small towns, uh, just because online working allow us to do that. This might be very marginal for, 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 for very small social group, probably the most, the privileged one, where they can really work where, where they want and not, cannot be applied for everyone. But the key would be instead to reconsider how uh, government, how uh, local authorities and how, of course, private sector could uh, all join forces to um, reinvest in strategic sectors 
in the countryside to allow the countryside to flourish, to allow the countryside to be sustainable, to allow the economy to be diverse and to be not just relying on certain specific sector. And, along, and of course, uh, together with that, there is also the need of, uh, of larger investment in public health, in connectivity, in infrastructures, in, um, in broadband, and so on and so forth. So under this condition, I think that probably uh, in, in the countryside in the future could really uh, play a role uh, for, for those uh, sort of societies like the Western one, which has somehow embraced an, a, a pure urban model at some point, uh, forgetting uh, that part of the response to our urban life and, 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 uh, and also working opportunities more general could also be placed in different places. And this is what is quite astonishing in, in a way in the context of China where a country where just 60% of people lives in, uh, in, in urban areas um, and the rest in, 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 in the countryside, well, the government has decided to start from now to retain those people, to retain those economic activities, because in, in a phase of, of uh, drastic change, such as the one we are experiencing right now, these are resources that can be somehow reconsidered for uh, future sustainable scenarios, uh, much more that we can do now, for instance, in Europe. Thank you very much.